Hello everybody, and is Mario here sitting with James? The one and only homosexual handbag. <laughs> the perfect accessory to any crime. Well, the crime being committed right here is uh, the review of Suicide Squad. Extended cut, not Ultimate Edition, because there was no Ultimate Edition. David Ayer said so. The only criminal thing here is that you were shafted for money. Like, you have yeah. already seen this movie, and you decided, oh, I'll buy the extended edition. It can't be any worse. It's extended, you know? Like, 11 minutes? And, and, and we counted with about five seconds of David Ayer, so I've actually paid for David Ayer to be in a movie. What the hell? And I bet you feel worse for it. I feel like the Joker, <gasps> right at this scene, just spent... <laughs> I should point out, like before we continue, that I actually did enjoy Suicide Squad, not for the technical mess that it is, but for the the personal thrill ride and fun that I had watching it, because it is fun. I can't honestly say in my heart that it's not fun, because I know I can watch this and say that I can make a better movie, and that's fun to me. However... In terms of, like, the mix of characters, everybody in it, and when the acting is done well, it's done really well. Like, I do I, I do have fun with it. It is... I prob- I, yeah, I probably expected more from it, but... Eh, it's a David Ayer film. What David Ayer's normally... Expect? When I found out that David Ayer was directing it, I was quite excited, because he's done films like that, um, End of Watch, yeah. and stuff like that. Quite interesting very story gripping films but you know what I find with um, directors who make those kind of films coming on to do a comic book film what's that James? they 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 can't be realistic because realistically how do you make a film like Superman versus Batman or Batman versus Superman or the Suicide Squad or even any of the many Marvel films that we're graced with today How do you make them realistic? Marvel, granted, do it a bit better. However, you're not going to sell me on the realness of it. I don't personally think that Thor the God of Thunder is going to come down to my house when it's raining. And I would love that very much. But it's not going to happen. Hold on, it's not going to happen. I thought this was all based on true stories. I, well, I, I, no. (laughs) Aww. But if you look deeper into it, there's probably a bit of truth in there. Like, look, there's Rick Flag eating a chicken leg. That is the most <laughs> realistic thing about this film, that he's only human. Well, yep. And he's bricked himself and grabbed the gun, because, you know, he is only human, where the rest of them are, oh, uh, uh, yeah, still only human. Yeah, that is that is pretty fair. Well, you really Half of them are still technically only human. Yeah, Killer Croc, I don't even class him as human anymore. Boomerang, Deadshot, Harley... Slipknot. <laughs> God, <laughs> not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, big uh, rapist. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. That, did they, did, like, the thing is, is like, I, I, I'm just kind of watching this in the background, but did they ever actually, did they put that bit in? No, there isn't. There, the guy didn't even get an intro for him. Like, everybody got their little backstory. Oh, this is how they ended up here. Oh, this is how they became this, this villain. No mention, just... Nah, nah, he's he's our he's our dirty sock. Just don't mention him. Yeah. But I have him there. Just 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 just, just kill him off. Yeah, that that's kind of pretty much what his sole purpose is for this film. But anyway, I think uh, y- you you've you've seen all of the extended edition. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um. So I think you should you 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 should talk us through it a wee bit without spoiling too much, of course. Not that. You know, we've already just ruined uh, a non like, important a, a, a Z-list, Z-list character. character just gets off like half an hour in. To be honest, the extended cut to the theatrical, not a great deal of difference. There was a couple extra scenes in it. One of the best ones was Harley on the motorbike uh, chasing and overtaking the Joker before we came on and started recording. I played it for you, and they actually cut out a pretty monumental scene 
which we'd all seen kind of behind the scenes recordings of the Joker backhanding Harley. So it's like, well, why? Obviously, they wanted to record it a certain way. They wanted to include all the abusive relationship stuff, but then go, oh, hold on. We're, we're going to turn it so that you really do think that this guy actually loves her in some weird kind of sick way, but, well, anyone that's read a comic or, hell, even the animated series, he loves to hate her. Then again, once he's, like, abused her and whatever, he'll just send her some flowers, just letting y'all know, like, oh, he still cares about her, even though I technically murdered her. The thing with the Joker, right, is the Joker is a bit weird in general, off the bat. I mean, there's nothing normal about that man. What they tried to do with this film and the original and the extended was make it that he was his whole kind of story was going to save her, and then he goes through all that trouble to do what he does to get to her, catches her on a helicopter n- near the end of the second act, and then throws her out in an attempt to kill her, and that to me doesn't make sense and i suppose like yeah the the joker doesn't make sense right in any book you read of him anything he does there's a method to what he's doing there's a method to that madness however there's no real strong foundation as to why he's doing that and in the original story that that is the original that he is kind of going to kill her so he goes through all that trouble to defuse the bomb in her neck to do all that and then to kill her, like, uh, there's no need for that, like, obviously the Joker tries to be a bit more personal, like, he would like to kill her himself, because that's the kind of weirdo he is. Well, if you look at it, he created it, so he should be the one to end it, I think that's what it comes down to. But what this, what the extended edition does, is it gives you more background into the fact of just how much he really doesn't like her, because when she, in that scene we were talking about, that motorbike that flashback, motorbike flashback um, she's chasing him down and like he's just like you're an actual pain in the ass can you just go away like forever and don't come back it, it, the look on his face is almost of like a clingy like ex-friend like oh not this one again like seriously i thought i got rid of her oh what's she gonna do now oh get out of my way like you, you just see this kind of look of disgust like I should have just killed her. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like what that is. So it makes sense. With that kind of flashback, it makes sense why he would personally go <coughs> and and try and kill her. But, again, it's like, you know, if that's the case, get her in sight and blow her fucking head off. Like, why do you not just do that? I mean, but then they obviously cut it. They tried to be really crafty with the cutting and they tried to... Um, make it like he pushed her out of the helicopter to save her and that doesn't work either <laughs> like nothing works like I, I i'm still like saying that whole push out of the helicopter if no matter what you say like 20 feet up is pretty high like 15 feet up is still pretty high that's at least like 30 40 feet high like there's no way Anybody with a, some kind of superpower, I don't care if you were a gymnastic, like... I'm pretty sure like, if you get... I, 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 I don't care, you would be blood and parts everywhere, your head would be caved in. I'm pretty sure that when you're pushed out of a helicopter, like something like 50 feet in the air, about to hit like solid concrete, I don't think gymnastics really helps you but <laughs> with that, like I think you're still going to hit the ground. <laughs> to me, like, I know of... You know, most of the kind of scenes in the extended edition. Um, basically, I think we should just kind of go with this whole idea that the original edition of the film is a technical mess. Oh, to, to put it nicely, mate. The extended edition of this film is also a technical mess. <laughs> Everything is a technical mess. And there's, like, oh, like yeah. The thing is, is, like, at the start I said that I really had a lot of fun watching this film because... The story's just so unbelievable that, and you've got these characters who do kind of sell it to you because the serious actors are being genuinely serious and the comedic characters are comedy gold at times. But 
I'll tell you the character that I genuinely hate the most. Should I do that? Waller. I, I fucking <laughs> hate her. And do you know something? I was living for her. See when I found out Viola Davis was playing her? I was totally for it. I was like, yeah, that would totally be Viol- a Viola De- Davis character. Play that well. And then, you know, when she's talking about setting the crew up, she does it in true Waller fashion. But... I just feel that there's like she is literally just made to be out, to be heartless. There's nothing to her. Whereas in the book, you do find you do find out that she does care about things. Like she's not as heartless as she thinks. And as she goes on, she does kind of start to care about the squad a wee bit because you know they're the only people that can seem to get work done. Um. So Waller was just a bit of a letdown, which is a shame because realistically, I should be saying that. I don't know, El Diablo was a letdown in comparison to her because she's like the main character. Um, Waller does things without any real description of why she's doing them. She's actually the biggest villain of the whole piece. Um, I I just don't like her. I think Waller, uh, if you look at it this way, Waller was the one that uh, found the totem of the brother. So basically, Waller is the ultimate villain here. She, okay, maybe inadvertently, but she caused it all. She was the one that went, okay, we'll get these people together. Oh, but they'll, we'll keep uh, Jun Moon alive and we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll get her like to go with this guy that we've got here so that, you know, he feels some for her, she feels some for him, and we'll just play on that while also using her to our advantage. Like, so, in this movie... I do not feel sorry for her. I, I feel sorry for, uh, like, at the end, the aircraft carrier uh, that gets wiped out and the crew on that. I feel sorry for all the other, uh, like, satellites that get destroyed. You know, th- like, they're, they're, it's not their fault. Poor little satellites in space. Like, they get destroyed because Waller knows where these things are. Absolute boot. That, that, that's Waller in a <laughs> nutshell, to be quite honest. An People abs- must care about satellites, okay? If you know your movies, Terminator, Matrix, to name a few, machines will rise. Protect the machines. I'm pretty sure, I don't know where you get the message, protect the <laughs> machines, because if machines will rise, I don't really want to be fucking protecting them, okay? Well, we'll be protecting now, maybe they won't attack us, you know? That's a very thin maybe. <laughs> When you give me proper <laughs> evidence to support what you're saying, then I'll take your word for it. But until then, I've got beautiful movies like Terminator <laughs> to remind me why we should hate machines. This this all being done while we record through a computer. <laughs> you know, if the machines rise, you're the first to get it. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> I should have watched where I was bitching. <laughs> anyway, back to what the podcast is all about. Um, I think terrible acting um, (laughs) (laughs) let's talk about each character a wee bit since we started off talking about the Waller Uh, Deadshot played by the marvellous Will Smith easily uh, the biggest draw like to the movie like his name is top bill I would say he's the only three dimensional character he's the only character who has a genuine backstory that we're invested in with his daughter well, let's be honest, a relatable, like, family. What's Harley got? A, well, kind of abusive, weird boyfriend. Oh, okay. Wh- no, well, technically, when he pushes her into the acid, that was their marriage. So, technically, uh, husband. Yeah. Abusive husband, cool. Diablo murdered his wife and kids. Croc, mutant somehow. <laughs> mutant somehow? Have you never DNA experiment? No, you well, know? I mean, in the books, he's born with it. He was born that way, baby. And God makes no mistakes. He's on he the was, outside, he was baby. Born this he way. was born that way. And um, this is the, the kind of... Killer Croc is born with that mutation, and it gradually gets worse as he gets older and older and older. But I think it was something like... It was kind of revealed that excess trauma, like too much trauma, would cause him to mutate further. So, something like that 
th- this is your sort of standard killer croc. Like this is what he kind of just becomes when he's an adult. Killer croc to me is like one of the most underrated characters in the whole thing. Like he gets nowhere near enough to do, but when he does say things, like he he says them in quite a funny way. And I thought I was going to hate Killer Croc because I just thought he just was just a CGI like character. Well, well, he's not even CGI. He's prosthetics. No, well, was it not like uh, I had like a kind of like prosthetic kind of top, and then they done whatever with the rest? Because I remember seeing some pictures where he, the guy with the kind of bit on, you know. Well, David, they all lied to me. I don't know why I should be surprised. He lied to me about this whole film. <laughs> Aye, k- so Deadshot's Deadshot's definitely the most relatable character of them all, apart from the fact that he's Will Smith and no one can relate with Will Smith, and that he kills people for money. I can relate to that a wee bit. I'd I'd kill people Only for money. I don't kill people for money. I sleep with them. No, uh, <laughs> I don't do that. Um, I have I have morals. Um. <laughs> Killer Croc, definitely the most underrated character in the whole film. El Diablo, there's a character that I like and I really don't like at the same time. Because, again, he doesn't do anything. He's got this whole Mr. T vibe of not getting on a plane. He's like, I'm not using my powers. The last time I used them, I killed people that I loved. That was your fault. No, no, no not the last time, because remember the yard fight? They oh, burned yeah, them all yeah. down. Of course. They but uh, here, here's the thing with like El Diablo. It's like... Okay, he's got a reason for not using his powers, and then it's like he's useless throughout the movie until the last act. Then it's just like, oh, redemption. Why? Reason. Like, there, he's not been given anything to go, oh, we'll do this for you. We'll let you. We'll, we'll never bother you again. They're not told that. They're just told, oh, you'll get years off your sentence. After they uh, take down the big bad, well, she does. She says she says that in that speech in the in fairness, she says it over an iPad, so she could be lying. But like she does say, if you succeed, you get years off your sentence. That's just the standard Suicide Squad trope. But here's the thing: like El Diablo seemed more than happy to be in jail because he felt like he deserved yeah. it. That's one of the things I like about him: the fact that he realises that he's done bad and he just kind of wants to be in peace, basically. Which, to be fair, he doesn't deserve because for what he done, he deserved a lot worse than what he got. However, he's he's like, he, he's a sort of standard tr- like tragic character who's done a bad thing and they want to be redeemed so they redeem themselves by doing X, Y and Z. You know, there's nothing really special about that. But, he is. I like I like El Diablo as a character. I just don't like the attitude that he has because I don't feel that there's a lot of basis for him to have that attitude. Um, because he has this attitude of like I'm not helping you guys do this because I don't want to use my powers because I, I'm too this. good. But then you're a gangster before making all this money and whatever, and then that just snowballed. And I mean, how bad is your life that when Harley Quinn gives you a pep talk in a pub, that's when you decide, you know what, I'm going to pull myself together. <laughs> when Harley Quinn tells you to get your life together, there is something wrong with you. <laughs> like, well, at least to me. Um, so who else do we have? Oh, f- oh, Jai Courtney, Captain Boomerang. He he was probably my wee guilty pleasure of the film, I think. He has a guilty pleasure for Pink Unicorn. I've got a guilty pleasure <laughs> for Captain Boomerang because Captain Boomerang in this film again was kind of underused. But comic relief, him and Croc. That's all, that was all. He, Croc wasn't even comic relief. He was maybe twice in the whole film. But well, in the Boomerang extended scene, we just seen uh, him uh, bring up his lunch. That Aye, was but that was a deleted scene, so it doesn't. I know. <laughs> I'm talking about people who went to see it in the theatres. Yes, there is a scene uh, where Croc throws up his lunch and then eats it again in a helicopter. And everyone's fine with this, My, apart from being mildly disgusted. But yes, um, that's one deleted scene. And it lasts for... About ten seconds. Ten if, seconds. If, if that. So add your ten seconds of Croc there with your 
pe- uh, five seconds of crock of shit David Ayer. You know, there's there's fifteen yeah, seconds and wrong. eleven minutes. I'm telling you this off in my head. There's not eleven minutes of extra footage in this film. How much is there? Five. Is there five? Because there's yeah. like sixteen added scenes. Um, because I've done my research, you see, there is, and but we'll get into that soon. We've got characters to to brush up. Uh, Harley Quinn, the one you went to see. Yep, Harley Quinn, crazy ass mofo. To be honest, like what what's not to like? Apart from her accent and the fact she's not wearing a proper costume and the fact that she's in a loving relationship with the Joker. But, but besides that, like like what what's not to love? Well, she was always in a she was always in a loving relationship. <laughs> he was well, in her own little box. Yeah, very uh, true. It's, it's just like it's okay. Daddy loves me. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what that that actually it must be what she goes through when she wakes up in the morning. It's like, ah, Daddy loves me. Daddy will buy me a pony. That's genuinely what gets her through the day. I'm well, the telling pony you. being a Lamborghini, a purple Lamborghini, very which true. I am still annoyed at because that song is not even in the extended edition. <laughs> Because that is my favourite song of that whole album. And I don't even like rap music. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, aye, I'm alright with this. Um, who else can we talk about? I feel that we're, I feel that we're, we're missing some great... No, no Slipknot, he's not important. Nah, Slipknot, it, it, it never got an intro card at the start, oh, so... yeah. How, how could we forget the one and only Shakira herself? Ah, uh, Cara the, Delevingne. The like, Enchantress. Bef- uh, before we started recording, I'd made a subtle joke. Subtle? Yeah, pretty subtle. It wasn't subtle. You tried to go to YouTube to find... Yeah, yeah I, actually, I did actually hoping, search for it. Pretty much hoping with your cock in your hand that there was going to be a video of her dancing. <laughs> James, you weren't meant to see that, okay? You're we're, sitting we're not, there. We're not mentioning it, okay? It's the last time it. we mention it, okay? Uh, yeah. Before we actually put this podcast out, one of us, or both of us, or we'll get a friend to do it, is going to make a video of Cara Delevingne doing our weird hip movement, hand jive pish, uh, with Shakira, hips don't lie in the background, because of reasons. The only reasons that matter, really, and the fact that it would just be the most perfect thing to ever exist. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We just fucking solved this whole movie. See how we said it was a shit heap? See how every character had their own wee song? Why wasn't Shakira Hips Don't Lie playing in the fucking background? Because Enchantress isn't supposed to be a funny character. Right? That would have been comedy gold if that was like that. See yeah, if that was how but they could have done that to be like, oh, wait there, oh, look at this character, she's cool, yeah. And then she turns out to have a, a total boot. Do you know what they could have done? They could have done the credits like the new Ghostbusters did when like Chris oh, Hemsworth was Oh, I've not seen it. it. I've not seen it. Don't. <laughs> I, d- I don't think I can bring myself to it. I think I will like shit out my intestines if I see it. Okay, we will go no further. <laughs> if you've seen the new Ghostbusters, you know what I'm talking about. That would have been amazing. I'm a simple guy. I like simple things. <laughs> like I'm just saying, David, they missed it. Um, but we won't get into that. <laughs> Ghostbusters <laughs> Rick Flag <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Rick Flag Simple man He likes pussy It's why he's there It's why he's there is to keep the w- woman in check s- Simple American Joe I like, this woman steps out of line I have to put a bullet through her head Like, oh I kill me Cool Can story, we, bro. Just for the lols, right? He, he's not an important character at all, but just for the lols... He's really not. <laughs> just for the lols, I want to bring up Scott Eastwood, who everybody thought was going to be playing a huge part. Oh, uh, yeah. Thought he was going to be playing, yeah. like, Grayson. Re- uh, remember that? Like, all the fun times before this movie came out? Like, oh, my God, who's this character? Oh, my God. Why is, is Scott it, Eastwood... Are they really this? Why is Scott Eastwood playing him? Oh, my God, he must be important. Like, like, why did they show him in the trailer? He's got to be someone important here. Like, no. And then there was the shat on. Then there was the theory that somebody put up. Granted, it was better than the whole Joker, Jason Todd theory. Like, that just breaks my heart and soul. Um, but... It was the theory that it wasn't actually Jason Todd that had died, it was um, Grayson. Grayson, but Batman faked his death, and Scott Eastwood is supposed to be Dick Grayson, but with Spyro, and I was just like, 
no. Like, I, don't get me wrong, it was an idea I could get behind, but I was like, where are they going to put this in this film? Like, uh, like here's the thing. Like, see all the fan theories? They are amazing theories. But want to know what it doesn't work well in? Directors with no fucking common sense. This is the thing. Like, Suicide Squad, to me, is a film where, like I say, it's fun, but it is a technical mess. And the story is a bit messed up. Uh, the editing is shocking. That editor should never work again. Unless David Ayer was telling them what to do, like scene for scene. In which case, David Ayer just needs to leave forever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you've got this whole thing where um, the film can somehow still be fun while being a train wreck. Like, and maybe that, I think it kind of works for it, to be honest. These people, these poor disadvantaged members of the Suicide Squad have had horrible lives. And this is them just trying to, you know, work after community service. There's a, there's a true story here. If you're a criminal working <laughs> off community service, I think you could relate to Chain it. Chain gang. Chain gang. That's basically it. Uh, one one uh, little thing that kind of is really well added in the extended cut to the theatrical. It's just like, oh, we're, uh, we're going to this city to do things. Why? Reasons! Uh, well, in the extended cut, you've got Deadshot asking Rick Flag, like, so who is it? Who are we going to save? Present? Like, they're actually going, okay, we need to give them a reason for actually following and, and not just, like, blindly going, oh, hold on, you've got a bomb in our necks to do what again? Cool. Done. Yeah, to, like, like, because you've got this whole thing where... Amanda Waller knows more than everyone else. She knows what's happened. Rick Flagg knows what's happened. The squad don't know anything, which kind of works in its favour because if you don't know and the squad don't know, you can kind of relate to them a bit more. But the thing that really builds suspense in a film is when the audience do know what's going on and the main characters do not. For example, Jaws. You don't see the shark for... Until pretty much... The, the beginning of the third act, you don't see the shark until they basically have to take it home. The rest it's all like first person, uh, stuff like that. That's how you really build tension. When the audience know that something's not right, but the characters don't. The characters are all speculating and you're just like, huh, I know there's a shark eating people. Like, <laughs> say something about it or you will die. Like, that, because people, humans like to be a little bit cruel. Like, let's be honest. It's just a thing like, e- like, even when you watch a film, how many times have you seen a film and you've thought, I just want that fucking bastard to die? Like, you know, it's quite... A, you, you just... If you, if you don't like a character, you don't relate to them, you want them gone. That's it. You, your mind's made up. It's never going to get better. And um, that's what Suicide Squad just doesn't do. I did not fear for the lives of any of these characters through this film. Because... It just seemed too like everything's all right. The, the the squad didn't crumble really at any point, like properly. There's the bit before it, the bar. It was, I was going to say the where, bar where they kind of fall apart, but the squad don't fall apart. They just break away from Waller and Flag. Yeah, for for a couple of minutes before they get back together, and they're like, whereas, "Oh, we're we're done here." Whereas I would have loved to have seen Deadshot go at it, Boomerang. Or, or just to have them all fighting each other. That's the kind of thing that sees something in these characters that you don't actually want to see them fighting each other no. because they can take down masses of people like that are trying to kill them, but when they turn on each other, which is one of the fundamental things about the Suicide Squad comic book, Deadshot gets told pretty much on a daily basis that he needs to kill a member of the squad. Like, <laughs> like And he's like, aye, I'll do that. Deadshot is too trustworthy in this. He's ma- it's typical Will Smith. He's made to be the hero of the story. When Deadshot in the comics would kill every single one of them given the option. Like, if Waller says, if you do this, I'll get you out of prison, he's going to do it. There's no, there's no kind of ground with him. And in the comics, he has done it plenty of times. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's the kind of thing this film's missing. I, I, I sense a malice. See, for a film that's supposed to be this dark, there needs to be malice. There needs to be something that's telling me that 
somebody in this group is going to get fucked over. And that's kind of like what I would expect from it. But there's no enough of that. That It all kind of comes in at the end when it's too late to win over, do you know what I mean? That sense of malice should come from the start. And instead, these characters are just living this kind of fantasy of, like, everything's all right. We'll be fine. Nothing bad's going to happen to us. Nothing bad could possibly happen to us. Yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've been put away in a super prison here. Like, they've had to get us out of here to do this job. Oh, we, we're super villains. We're cool. Exactly. That's, like I said, that's where the fun of the film is because no one seems to be giving a shit. Like, but if you look at it this way, like, just what you were saying another minute there, like, oh, the... They never go toe to toe against each other and stuff. They, you don't have that, like friction, friction in between them. Well, not to kind of like blow DC's trumpet because that's not my thing. Even though I do like DC, they want to be different from Marvel. Marvel had Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man go toe to toe, albeit for a couple seconds in Avengers and stuff, and then. You got Hulk and Thor going at it and stuff and whatever, but on this it's like, oh, our guys get on the same page right away. But it there's different kinds of friction burns, Mario. Right, different kinds. Like so, like for example, in your Civil War, right, they're basically told, right, guys, you fucked up big time. It was Tony's fault, but you're all getting the blame. These are all in detention, so. Here's what we're going to do. We're all going to sign a big peace treaty, and it means that you can't be superheroes unless we tell you you can be. And Captain America's like, no, mate, that's not what I'm all about. I'll do what I want. And Tony Stark's like, no, we've killed people. Like, we're bad people. Like, we need to be kept under control. So Tony's having a midlife crisis, and Captain America's like, well, you know, I'm, that's, I'm all about freedom and liberty and all that. And that kind of goes against what I want. So they split up, and then they have a big rammy, big fight. Spider-Man gets involved, Black Panther gets involved. To be honest, nobody was caring about Spider-Man by that point because Black Panther, for some reason, stole the show, which was amazing. Then you've got Guardians of the Galaxy, where the only genuine friction that happens in it is at the start, like sort of when they, they kind of, when Star-Lord meets Gamora, who then in inadvertently meets Rocket and Groot, who then like sort of just kind of meet up with Drax. And they kind of have friction along the way, and Drax is the main cause of that friction, because he wants something, like, he wants to square right up to Ronan, when we know deep down he wants to square up to Thanos, and that is an o that that's a, those are stepping stones, and then they bring the team together, and this, the only thing that pulled the team apart is, the closest thing it probably comes to it is when Enchantress at the end shows them their ideal dream, yeah, you know their ideal lives, and but then El Diablo's like, no, no, man, that's no real, and kind of shoves it away, like, like, and then you've got Harley who's like, and he's like, no, no, you don't want that, that's no real, and Harley's like, but I want that, <laughs> like, which was totally Harley Quinn, like that is that is the epitome of what Harley Quinn is. That that that's where this film really fails. That it's just I don't I I, I love to be honest, I kind of have a bit of a, a soft spot for like the cast who are playing these characters because let's be honest they're playing some of the the, the B and the C list characters you know Killer Croc's a big Batman villain but see if you ask people do you know who Killer top, Croc is top 10 it'd maybe reach top 10 Batman villains maybe but he'd be 10 but yeah he's, <laughs> no, he's not going to be fight. I mean it depends who it is I think I, I rate Killer Croc quite highly but if it, you, if you it's say it's a proper villain I wouldn't say so. There's I don't see, so much I don't see more from the Batman universe. Top, top five Batman villains without thinking about it. Joker, Joker Two-Face, Riddler, Two Mr. Freeze, Scarecrow. and Riddler. Yeah. Basically. Th that's it, in a nutshell. And you're, you're just sort and you're of missing like ones out like Clayface as well. And it's, it's you're missing Harley Quinn. Like, I, I, I wouldn't rate her much of a... Catwoman, uh, she gets classed uh, as a it's villain. It's like yourself, the like the gay handbag, you know, the she's accessory. She, she's, she's the Joker's accessory to Batman, you know, uh, to Joker mm -hmm. in a Batman story. Mm -hmm. Like there have been some like Harley and Batman stories, but not enough to go. Oh, she's like an ultimate nemesis. No, not really. No, but don't get me wrong. Like she's came closer to killing Batman 
can go to hers. Yes, animated series of Mad Love. Yes, I know, your favourite things. Uh, I, I know. know, I don't have it cgc now. <laughs> These characters are sort of, I mean, Captain Boomerang might be higher up on the Flashies, kind of. Oh, like easily. Like, easily. But that would only matter if you liked The Flash, you know. Um, and then you've got, obviously, characters like El Diablo. Never heard them until Suicide Squad. Same. So I think I remember well, the uh, reading the, su- the New 52 su- mm-hmm. Suicide Squad that actually had him in it. But then again, I didn't really care enough to go, oh, I like this character. Aye. He has, he has a strong backstory in the comic, which kind of resembles his story in this. But the comic can flesh it out more. Whereas this just proper rushed it. it w- there was no, no lead up to it, really. Like, there was no, like, there's none of El Diablo. El Diablo is the character you want to see chatting and mingling with the others. Because he, he's not doing anything. Because he does 90, nothing. 99.9% Kitana of the movie is well, nothing. We never even mentioned Katana earlier. She is I, I, arguably one of the best characters in it, but does nothing. Like, and then you've got that wee bit like where she's talking to her husband stolen the sword, which I agree at it by oh, the way. Oh, that is brutal. But, and then she's like, but, uh, but if I die, we'll be together. And it's just like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. But she does nothing, like, apart from be a bodyguard to Rick Flag, Like... No, well, like that's the thing. In the extended edition, you actually have a hell of a lot more from her, which, hell, why would you not? If you're trying to, like, maybe go, oh, we want to branch out these characters, have each of them having their own, like, separate movie... Why wouldn't you include this in the theatrical cut, though? But see, that's the yes. but see, that's the thing with Katana. Like, vigilante wise, like on on the hero's side, she is one of the most loved and respected characters. Her bombshell statue gets me in. Like, hold on, she's got a bombshell statue. Ah, uh-huh. oh, hold on, I need to see this. You'll love it. Look. Are you are you going to cost me about one hundred and fifty quid here, Ray? Here's the thing. Wasn't it the last Batman animated series where uh, Katana was actually Batman's protege? Yeah. And I might be wrong, but is she... I was going to say Birds of Prey. Isn't she in an association with that comic? Was she not in that really bad TV series of Birds of Prey? I can't mind. I forgot to look at that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, this is the kind of thing. Katana is such an interesting character, and she's a character who doesn't get any real screen time in this, really. Like, besides your top kind of like three Harley, Deadshot, kind of balance Waller and Flag, that, that's like you can include them because they're both like kind of figureheads. Like, one just goes communicates through the other, so count them as one, and that's your three characters. And I don't mean to keep comparing it to Guardians, right? Here's but here's the thing: it's, it's hard to not compare it. It's a fun team movie. Like, see your kind of Avengers. Mm-hmm. That's depending who you say this to. Like, I would class Avengers as a kind of like serious superhero team movie. Same with kind of like the last couple X Men. Mm-hmm. But this is the light side. This is a dark humor, funny, like and th- th- like I say, like I, I can see. I as I look at it, I can see why a lot of people don't like it. But I can at the same time see why a lot of people do like it. And I'm, I'm, I'll explain this to you. When I when when I was studying film and TV, I was always told that you have to keep the audience engaged and you have to do right by the audience. You know, the audience will only know what you show them. What this film does, <laughs> right, is doesn't show you anything. And it doesn't give you anything. It gives you the characters, it gives you the mission, that's all you've got. So see what happens along the way. You're picking little tiny things up. You're not picking up anything from the story. You're just getting action, blah, 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 blah. Everything else is irrelevant up until the third act, um, where you know, they have to kind of tie it up. This film is probably how I would describe it as a party film. (laughs) 
where you've went to the party, you've paid attention, you've met everybody, you've greeted, you've greeted everybody, you've got pissed <laughs> through the rest of the night, and then you've woke up at the end and you've thought, oh, Jesus, I never, I never, I never done that thing last night, <laughs> and now I need to kind of go do it now. That's exactly what this film is, and I'm going to refer to them as this now, party films, films that have a nice wee bit of the start, absolutely, absolute madness in the middle, and then a wee ending that just kind of feels like, oh, Jesus, we need to fix that, we need to sort that out. Like, like literally the ending for this film is like waking up at the end of a party next to someone you hate, <laughs> naked, <laughs> right? Because, like I say, it's just, all this madness has happened, you're not getting anything, you're getting a little bit of character dialogue, you're learning a bit about the characters, but by the end, you're just sort of like, right, they have to, they have to tie it up now, so, you know, we know the villain's going to get killed, or something's going to happen to the villain. End of story. So, that's what Suicide Squad is to me. So, but calling it a party film is the exact same way why I can see that people love it. Because you've got your bits at the start, you've had your music playing, you've had your pre-drinks. The middle doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore by the middle. Because it's just action, it's just comedy, it's just this and that. And then by the end they've tied it up. And you don't think much about it. When I left this uh, in the cinema the first time, I enjoyed it on the basis of that it was fun. I wasn't thinking about... Because I would normally go see a film twice. And yeah. I would wa- just watch it for, for the amusement. Just take it and in the and then I'll you'll it down pick and it. I'll pick at it. And believe me, I've done a lot of picking the film. <laughs> I actually had to go a third time to keep picking at it. But... I will defend the film on the basis that I found it personally fun, and I can see why anyone else would find it fun. But, at the same time, you have to look at the technical side of it. However, not everyone does. Not everyone's as sad as me. (laughs) And not everyone is as sad as people who really have a genuine interest in that breakdown and that creative build-up. So, like I say, part of that has to go with that and yeah like people will enjoy it if they don't care about the technical side because at its core you can have fun with it um and that's that's why i'm kind of two-sided on it it's fun but it's a mess it's a hot mess and that's just what makes it work um speaking of things that don't make it work oh what you what you going on now? The man that gets me wet every single time. It the man that you get behind. The the man that I get behind every single time he appears on screen. The Joker. The Joker in this film is a bit of an omni shambles, and by a bit. A bit. I mean a lot. <laughs> like the sad thing is, is I really like Jared Leto as the Joker, which kind of hurts me because I fucking hate Jared Leto. I like, don't think I can stand the sight or the thought or the th- even mention of Jared Leto's name, but I know what you mean. Like, he's, like t- take a look at every different iteration of the Joker. They've got Cesar Romero, the comical that will spray acid through... Like, uh, shoot a bang gun. Like. Yeah, just because it's funny. Uh, Nicholson. Who was a bit like Romero? But kind of... Darker. With, 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 that's, I kind of get that that's where Jared Leto was kind of took inspiration from a bit. Because he was comedic, but quite frightening at the same time. Whereas Jared Leto has kind of flip-sided it to being more terrifying than comedic. Which kind of works. Like, something people say about Jared Leto in this film is that we don't like the portrayal of uh, Jared Leto's Joker. We don't like how he played the character. We don't like how he acted. We think that he was too maniacal. We didn't see any comedy in him. He's the fucking Joker. You're not supposed to like him. I know. I any any comedy, like what? L- listen to the guy's name. Joker. You would assume. He's a, he's a maniac. He does thick, sick things. Just, why? Reasons! Because he is a maniac. He's a maniac, that's it, right? And that's the kind of thing with him. He just doesn't give a flying fuck who you are. He is going to kill you. He's going to... Probably kill your family just... Just because. 
just because he hopes you're getting down from heaven and you're saying that. Because he doesn't want you to get lonely there. Right. That's the thing. I, know, I suppose if he's anything, he's anything but like, careless, you know what I mean? He's always thinking about other people. But that's the kind of thing, like, people have said to me plenty of times, it would have been the right how Jared Leto played the Joker. They, 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 they couldn't have found anything enjoyable about him. It's like, but you're not supposed to. And I think that's, that's why I'll defend Jared Leto a wee bit here, because he, he done something. I love the Joker. Every book he's in, I'll read it, and I love it, because he's, he's, a, he's absolute madness, and he's absolute ecstasy to read about and to watch, right? And when Jared Little, when when he was cast, I was kind of like, oh no, like, this isn't good. Why, why, why? And then people were like, but Jared Little's actually a really good actor, like, stuff like that. Um, and then I'd seen the tattoo picture, which was released on my birthday. I believe it was 14th of July. Yeah. Um, and that was released on my birthday. And I was like, it's like God a birthday is present. sending me a gift. <laughs> a gay man who believes in God. What are the odds? <laughs> but... I was just sitting there, like, between flaccid and hard on, do you know what I mean? I couldn't <laughs> decide. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, what have they done? Like, wh- wh- why the tattoos? The teeth are like, the teeth are always like. Like, but the, the, uh, the, f- the theories behind, like, the teeth were actually quite a good one. That he's had that many run-ins with Batman that he's, he's punched his teeth down his throat. He's a human. That's all he is. He's nothing special, right? He is a human at the end of the He's day. He's an arsehole. And if Batman punches him in the face hard enough, his teeth are going to fall out. His teeth aren't indestructible. And I kind of get... I was, t- see, see, talking about teeth, just to uh, jump into a different thing. How many times has, like, Apocalypse or Mongo or someone, like, knocked the sh- living shit out of Superman or someone... And not one of their teeth has went flying into the sun. Because, like, that's a completely different ball game. You're talking about Superman people. I know, like, his teeth are indestructible as well. Cool. Can I get it? But surely someone knocking the living shit out of you. You end up flying, like, 50 to 100 feet away, maybe even more. Why isn't your entire teeth just, like, gone? That, that, that's a... Because Americans love raise. dental plans, Mario. Oh, and yes. Well, you are, you are forgetting the Americans care more about their teeth than they do their health care. Do you know that? Americans know. don't want to accept health care. Ameri- like, Americans also care more about electing some mad billionaire to run their country than some mad boot. But that's <laughs> different subject. Some mad billionaire, <laughs> some mad boot. I don't know about you, Mario. <laughs> I don't like both of them, but... You know, some mad millionaire, yeah, some mad boot is kind of gonna win it for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> not to, n- not, not that I'm advocating Donald Trump. Why would I do that? He wants none he, of us. He, he thinks that um, his vice president, Mister Pence, thinks that homosexuals can be cured with electroshock therapy. Jokes on him. We um, love it. electroshock shown in this movie. Tie it back in, you know. Ah, uh, yes, like, of course, because we 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 thought of this because the Joker electrocutes Harley Quinn. Because he's trying to turn her straight or some hold, reason. Hold on, hold on. So, uh, Jared Leto's Joker, Electro shocks you. That's a, that's the ultimate like thing. That you that's that's your only chance to be like this close to him, and it's like okay, I'm going to do this to turn you straight, but this is the only closeness you'll ever get to me. Would you take it? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Why on earth would I risk <laughs> going straight? Mike Pence, Donald Trump's VP, does genuinely believe that electroshock therapy can cure homosexuality. The joke's on him. We gays love it. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's just one of the things, in it? But anyway, <laughs> back to the... Let's not make it political, because politi- pol- political things ruin everything. Very um, true. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we've, we've kind of covered... A lot of it. Um, I think that overall, I'm most displeased by the Joker's tattoos than anything. Um, the the tattoos just don't make sense. Don't get me wrong. See if in the Batman film when he takes it off and he's got the big dragon up his back. Yeah, I'll be all for that. Like that 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 totally explains it to me because that was a uh, R.I.P. 
that man RIP that was shooting off. Aye, because he runs about topless in that with his wee, with his wee braces on. Oh, is he sure? Is I'm he? pretty sure. Yes, um, the the Joker with his dragon tattoo. I think that would be. I, I think if he has that, I think if Jared Little has that, that can nicely tie in. That would be like a good tie in, no like that god awful tuxedo thing. Oh, like, the Alex just, Ross a, uh, throwback. The Alex Ross throwback that was not relevant, but it was nice to see. But it wasn't relevant. It, it all it done was really show a history, mm-hmm. albeit like two seconds. I think that was. Um, <clears throat> I genuinely think that that was the director's idea of thinking this is connected to the comics. This is comic books. You've seen this before. Albeit you've not seen anything else in this film before. <laughs> but, like I say, I do enjoy thoroughly uh, Jared Leto's Joker. I want to see more of him. I want to see him... I, I just want to see him really do more. I think this film totally just used him as an advertising tool in. Because people thought, we've not had a Joker since Heath Ledger. And how do we top that? And how do we top that? Well, I'll tell you why, how you top that. You actually get him to play the Joker. Like, because Heath Ledger, God bless his soul, was not the Joker. He was just an anarchist in clown's makeup. He, he, he was good. Like, he really portrayed the darkness of the Joker. But his only comedic thing is the pencil magic trick. There's no other comedy behind that. Oh, uh, well, there is the whole, oh, do you want to know how I got these scars? Changing that's up, showing but that's that not, he's possibly... That's not funny. That's like... That's that whole kind of line with the joke. See, Heath Ledger's Joker, he was more tied sort of with the comic book side because uh, in The Killing Joke, you know, he has that line of, if I have to have a past, I would rather it was multiple choice. That whole idea that he changes it. He tweaks it to be what he wants because, you know, The Killing Joke implies that he had a tragic life so he doesn't want to remember it like that. He wants to change it and twist it and make it how he wants it. And that's why that s- those scenes are so breathtakingly good. Heath Ledger's Joker is really good. But to me, he's not the Joker. He's a complete reimagining like Jared Leto. But Jared Leto is still trying to look comic book accurate. You know, the, the, the slicked back hair, the... The, the, the smart outfits, the purple suit and all that. And yeah, Heath Ledger had the purple suit. But like again, Christopher Nolan films, very tied down, very, you know... Grounded. Grounded, very realistic. Which, I'm sorry, but after I seen Bane, I was like, the realism is gone. <laughs> like, I, I think the realism was gone when I heard Tom Hardy's Bane voice. I think that was when the realism died for me. I was like, there's no way Tom Hardy sounds like that. everyone was just like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I will return to Gotham. Like, what the fuck, dude? You're a fucking badass. Don't do that. You sound like a pure gimp. But that was the thing. He sounded really posh British. But he and like he's supposed to be raised in a, like, <laughs> I've never saw that. I can tell. Like, uh, he was supposed <laughs> to be raised in, like, in a, a hole. A, in a hole, like, near the Himalayas. Like, I don't think they speak British out there. Well, they did have TV there, so maybe I learned to speak through that. What was he? Was he watching like Faulty Towers? Was he watching like <laughs> reruns of Faulty Towers in there? Something tells me. Who's just walking around? <laughs> he watched that box set to death, didn't he? That explains it. Uh, but yeah, um, like I say, if you want to compare Heath Ledger's Joker and Jared Leto's Joker, anybody would tell you. That there is no comparison. Ledger's tops and hands down. However, when Jared Leto made the the really naughty remark of if I died tomorrow, all of these scenes would be released and people would love it, I was just like, nay. <laughs> like, there's never a good time to say that. Like, I wish by that, I wish I was like, I don't know, like, his equivalent to Malcolm Tucker for the <laughs> thick of it. Like, like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you have no idea what you have done. Like, you've ju- you've just fucked it all. Like, well done. Like, you've let them know there's more. You've, 
dare you? Not only have you let them murder more, you basically said, you, you, do you know what? You've got to die tomorrow. <laughs> you've you've <laughs> promised it now. It needs to happen. Like, we want this solo Joker movie take on Suicide Squad. We need it. You fucked the plan? No, stepping away from the film, because we spoke about the characters, we spoke about the plot, and, and we spoke about the technical side of it. On what you've just said there, right, we want a Joker movie. Do you think that that has only been said because in the New 52, my DC decided that they were going to release Joker compendium books between Endgame and Death of the Family? So that you didn't have to buy um, the, the individual issues of Death in the Family, like Death in the Family Batman, Death in the Family Batgirl, Death of the Family Nightwing, Death of the Family, you know, yeah. like that. I don't, even, I don't even know if there was a Death of the Family Nightwing, but you know. Uh, there was one for every member of the Bat Family. Cause it, I it don't showed. think his story was tied to it, because it was more in the Batman story, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, it sort of goes on to this thing, like how the Joker kind of captures them all. So what they did, instead of saying to people, oh, you have to buy every single one of these things, it, when Endgame finished, they released a compendium, which was like the Joker Endgame, like the Joker um, Death of the Family, which was just literally the Joker scenes and every arc to do with Death of the Family, as if you were reading it from the Joker's perspective. That's what those big Joker books are. That is what a film of this would be. You're just seeing it for the Joker's perspective. You're not really getting a lot of backstory, but you're getting what you need to know. And realistically, a Joker film would not be run off the back of Jared Leto alone. Because technically, this is the first film, that would be the first film that Jared Leto has personally, properly, at this age now, starred in. Because he's normally played the supporting character. Yeah. He's always been very good at that. I think... If the Joker had a bigger role in this, he kind of would have been typecast as the star because technically he's the biggest actor. Yeah. Technically, well, in this well film. the biggest character. The biggest character. Because um, uh, I would, I would you, argue you, you if compare I him to Will Smith, uh, Jared Leto, Will Smith, who would you say is a bigger well, Will actor? Smith, I'll give you that. I forgot Will Smith existed for a second there. How can but we forget? I would say that the three main well-known characters in this, no, not characters, actors, are Will Smith, in order of importance, Viola Davis, and Jared Leto. Because Margot Robbie, while... Well, <coughs> relatively new. Relatively new, but she's done a lot of good films. Um, people do love her. Like, she's very good at what she does. Um, Jai Courtney, Terminator, don't need to say any more than that. I could list all the bad films Jai Courtney's been in, but I'm not going to. All have been hits, including this one, apparently. Mm, apparently, because Jai Courtney's in it, so it must be true. <laughs> Cara Delevingne, <laughs> a model turned actress. Uh, at least someone was controlling a stick up her arse when she was <laughs> doing all her hip jive, you know. June Moon. June Moon. She plays June Moon well. She doesn't play Enchantress well, because that is not Enchantress. <laughs> That is someone Enchantress, pretending to be a voodoo witch. I like... Do you know what? Do you know what? <coughs> I'm going to just throw everything I've said at the window. Do you know what, David Ayer? Thank you. Thank you for completely altering everything. Thank you for making it your own thing. Thank you so much for fucking this film up the arse. Because no matter how fun it is for me to watch, Enchantress is not Enchantress. Captain Boomerang is actually funny. He's not funny <laughs> in the books. He's a pain in the arse. Deadshot, you know, he's probably the only one who's accurate to his comic book counterpart. Um, Katana, who realistically is who I'm living for in this film. And I just don't see enough there. El Diablo, who I really don't give a fuck about. Harley Quinn, who makes us, like, Harley Quinn, do you want to know what, uh, I'm going to call it Harley Quinn syndrome now. <laughs> Harley Quinn syndrome. When a character obviously thinks behind the scenes that they have been forgotten about and feels the need to throw themselves into the screen. Like, just going, oh, did you forget I was in this film? No, no I've seen you for the last half hour then. Like, how are you doing? It's like, oh, but just in case you, you forgot, you just, like, just keep raise your head up like everything's all right, like nothing really matters. And that's 
and the thing is, is I kind of get enough of Harley Quinn. I completely contradict everything I say when I say that. <laughs> I kind of get enough of her. But that is the, what, exactly what she does in this film. She just kind of... She's the character that effectively is running it. Like, she's the character that asks all the questions. Well, she's if, you, the ca- if you think about it, every time she looks at something, it's her that gets a flashback. Like, when, did, when does Deadshot get a flashback? Because th- that's the thing. There's, no, there's not... There's no... There's no consistency. Deadshot's the one... He's the He should be the character you're following. Even though in the comics he is the character you follow most of the time. He's not likeable in the comics. And in this he shouldn't be likeable, but he's made to be likeable because Will Smith wouldn't sign a contract if his character wasn't likeable. Oh, yeah. Margot Robbie stands as the, the upbeat, funky comic relief character who's just, you know... Right. She's the sex, in it? Se- she's sex the, sells. I hate to say it, but she's the sex appeal. Uh, you know, we all know the, the, the debacle with the, the underwear situation for hot pants that hot became hot hotter pants. pants in the real film. Like, um, the thing is, overall, I'd say with Suicide Squad, I'm just sort of like, yeah. It's, I, I, it's fun. I, lo- I, I love the fun that I get from watching it, but it's a technical disaster. Story's a disaster. Everything's a disaster. Like I say, it suffers from party syndrome. <laughs> Where at the start, you're having your few drinks, you're getting introduced to everybody, everything's all right. Then just somebody starts throwing up and everything just goes mental for like the rest of the night. And then you fall asleep and you wake up naked next to your arch nemesis. That is it, right? That is it. That is what this film is. And party syndrome, as I have just described, sounds like a lot of fun. So, you know, it's fun, but it's not your ideal situation. So, I think I would like to see more Suicide Squad but it needs to be more structured like David Ayer said he wrote that script in six weeks I was like are you being serious like if that took him six Do weeks what did he spend like I don't know a week writing the script five weeks wanking going how short can I get these pants to ride up Margot Robbie's arse like just pleasuring himself going Hold on, can I get myself in this movie? Yes, I can. I, gu- I guarantee you that's what was happening. See, do you want to know what that reminds me? I remember when um, I remember when Lady Gaga's poker face came out. I heard on the radio that apparently Lady Gaga said the poker face only took her ten minutes to write, literally because the words are literally poke, 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 poke her face, poke, poke, poke her face for like three minutes. Yeah, and there's a wee bit in between there wee bit of like actual chorus stuff and actual verses um but for the most part it's well, just poker face what? like through the whole song so no wonder it took 10 minutes to write that's exactly what i think they would have done i think he wrote like like, like look at it look at it log logically right the bad the guys where are they they're in jail bad thing happens bad guys go to bad thing bad guys fix bad thing Bad guy save day. Bad guy gets reward. For being Boom. bad. He just brought a fucking movie! <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and I think we should end this on a wee bit of fun. I think we should end this on a what, wee a bit of fun. What, a pop quiz? No, no, a pop quiz. Um, I think that we should literally, for the next five or so minutes, rewrite the Suicide Squad. Because if, to be honest, if David Ayer can do it, why can't we? He wrote a script in six weeks. We'll do it in six minutes. So S- hold on. This is it. Is this the part of uh, this the end segment now for ongoing? We podcasts? rewrite bad films. We, we rewrite the movie to suit our needs. Aye. All right. Challenge accepted. Okay. Right. Okay. Joker. So got, so no Joker. Wait, 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 wait. Let, me, let me get my notebook out. Okay. Right. right. I've got my notebook. Right. So first of all, story. What's happening? Story. Right, there is no Joker. Joker's only in flashbacks. That's the main issue, right? right no okay. Joker. That's not a story. That's a part no. of the story. We need a genuine story. Okay. Uh, after the death of Superman, which will obviously timeline-wise, Batman has gone MIA. 
Because he's away looking for pals. Because that seems to be all Batman is doing in in these films. Oh, and another thing, everyone knows who Batman is. We need to rectify that. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Will Smith is going to get his little mind wipe from MIB and he's going to go around everybody that knows who Batman is and erase the fuck out of their mind. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. There's, like there, there's the first part of the, the plot, okay? And then just as he's about to kill Bruce Wayne because he doesn't know that Bruce Wayne's Batman, that's when he gets put, that's when he gets put in jail. So <coughs> he gets put in jail and his wee daughter's away gallivanting with a fucking maw or something. Like, no relevant. Uh, <coughs> right, so that's Deadshot's story out the way. Much better. Right, he's tried to do, he's been forced to do something and he's ended up in jail. That's a good way to live. In fact, you know what? I would, I would do it this way. Lex Luthor somehow is pulling the strings above Waller. He's got some swing with people above Waller. He once broke out of jail. And obviously we're assuming because Batman branded him, well, he went to brand him, that he's in a high security prison. Like, there's, there's no way that he's getting in or out. If Batman can get in or out, then good on him. It's Batman. Of course he's going to get fucking in and out. Hey, hey. So, Lex Luthor, still got someone on the outside who's given money, t- paying the right people off. Waller doesn't even know who the fuck the squad is going to break out. So, your squad members, who would we be? Oh, right. Uh, right. Harley Quinn's a must, because she has comic relief. She, she would be the sex appeal going undercover to seduce guards to... Bartle Mellow Melt with mallets. Yeah. Because she doesn't do that in this film. I know. She has the mallet, but she doesn't belt anybody that with That is what I want to fucking... I never even realised it just to there. Yeah, back back there. I've got six minute we'll, script. We'll talk to that. We'll talk about this after the six minute script. Okay, so Harley Quinn is your sex appeal. She's the one. Are, are you actually branding her that? Is it the sex appeal? See when her well, dick comes off, well, and it's like Harley Quinn, the sex appeal. <laughs> I'm pretty sure ninety nine percent of the audience would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I'm not having her. I'm not having that much arse shown. Uh, we, we can have her in the play suit. Okay. Right. Okay. We'll have her in the play suit. All right. So she's a sex appeal. She's going into the uh, supermax prison to fuck around with people undercover. Mm-hmm. Right, you've got Deadshot. He's your Overwatch. He's the one that's making sure everything's run to playbook. He's leader. Eyes on the ground. Uh, let's see, Boomerang. Have Boomerang, yeah. Yeah, he, he better be the lovable fuck up, I suppose. So I, we need a lovable fuck up. Okay, uh, Supermax Prisons, what do we need? We need someone to break down walls. I would go with Mr. Freeze and maybe Raven. A little bit of a but, 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 combo. But remember, right, remember, we need to have a character who just dies for the sake of dying, because that's Suicide Squad. Well, so I'm thinking we go Assault on Arkham style, KG Beast. Instead of being... Oh for yeah. your muscle, because you wouldn't even need it. You wouldn't even need freeze now, because you've got KG Beast. Well, you want someone cool. You do want somebody cool. That like that joke works on two levels. I hope you know yeah. that. And oh, <laughs> unintentional puns at it again. <laughs> unintentional jokes. I bet you feel right fucking proud of yourself. Aye, I'll well, be stroking one out once but you Mr. leave. Mr. Freeze wouldn't work as part of the squad. How? Yeah. I think he's the only person that could realistically get out of it. To just freeze the bomb. Because his skin is that cold and they need to keep him refrigerated, basically. Well, they could basically have it in his refrigeration suit. Like, mm. you you go out of line, your suit blows up, you will melt. No, he, he will just literally blow up. <laughs> 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 he will just literally <laughs> blow up. He, he won't melt, he will blow up with the suit. <laughs> like, um, right, okay, right, okay, I'll give you Mr. Freeze, right? So I'm, I'm giving okay. you a budget right now. So you've got Harley Quinn, you've got Deadshot, you've got... Boomerang. You, You've got Boomerang, you've got Freeze, Freeze. and do you want Bane or KG Beast? KG Beast is an easy uh, kill, nobody cares about him. You can't kill Bane or Freeze. I'd maybe say Dr. Light. Dr. Light? Yeah. Why? Just a prick. He's, he's a rapist. What's, what's better than having rapists die on screen? Clearly David Ayer and me should be like brothers. 
Maybe, 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 but please be the better brother. Uh, right, okay, I'll give you Dr. Light, right, go on. Right, so that's okay. your five members, but one of them's gonna die, so you're Dr. Gonna Light. Need, you're gonna need another But here's two. the thing, Dr. Light can always... What's... I'm trying to think. Mm. Again, do you want to go... Like, a cheat death, you know? Like, who, who would that be? I'm, I'm trying to think outside the box of just, like, Batman villains, but then again, like... How do you put a bomb? Who, who who's the uh, Christ? I can't fin- fucking remember. Uh, name of the archer that trained Green Arrow. Malcolm Merlin. Him, have him, but not as a death character. Well, just just there for the sake of being yeah. there. Right. Okay. He's he's also in the team. Right. Okay. So so far you've got Harley Quinn, Mister Freeze, Deadshot, Do- Deadshot, Boomerang, Boomerang Doctor Light, and Malcolm Merlin. Yep. So you need one more person. Uh, need somebody powerful, like super powerful, but not enough to be able to trick the bomb or something. So here's the thing. You rule out any Superman or Wonder Woman characters. They're too strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone with some flash. Flash, flash. In fact, substitute... Mr. Freeze for Captain Cold. Right, okay. I'll give you that. Because same you, same kind of power set. Because Mr. Freeze... a little bit more personality. Because Mr. Freeze is not an arsehole. So they can't be having Mr. Freeze. So you've got two. Flash. You've got an Arrow villain. You've got kind of a couple Batman ones in there now and again. Uh, let's think. Let's think. You know what? KJ Beast it is. KJ Beast it is. KJ Beast it is. You need someone with a bit of muscle, so go. go with right, it. okay. So, I'm, I'm going to pull you up on a few things here, Mario, already, because this okay. is what an actual educated producer should do, right? right so, we've got Harley Quinn, right? She's, yep. your, she's your sex appeal and your comedy act, your comedy bitch, right? She's she's where the comedy comes from, right? So, we're keeping her. Boomerang. Mm, see, the thing is, is Boomerang doesn't really work well with anyone. And we don't well, really this would like would him. be weird with, it would be more comic book, so... So he'd have the skip hat and the actual jacket and he'd, he wouldn't look like a tramp? Yeah. Right, but, okay. Uh, you, you've sold me but on, on the fact that he won't The like internal a strife, take it from New 52, uh, I think it was a second arc in New 52, where he's kind of like put in almost like contention with Deadshot for a lead, if mm. I remember right. Yeah. So there's your internal friction. And not the one in your old pants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boom. Right. So, Captain Cold. Yes. Now you're 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 walking on a fault line here because you've got two Flash villains. I know. Well, that's the thing. This is where the kind of like we're gonna fuck them over. Like we're 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 bros. We know the ins and outs. Like we we've worked together. We can we we trained like Flash before. Only for them to get up and not fuck us, but we took we took them down. Right, okay. Right, that, yeah. it's it's the bromance, you know, like your rocket and group. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Like, have a faction within the faction, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one that yep. will screw them over. But you know, like in the end, like we we we're a team. We take the serious ends and we help your buddies out. Right, okay, fair enough. I'll give you that. Right, so we've got KG Beast dead. Like. Cheap death. Kind of like what Diablo is. Like, no one really cares. He's a rapist scum fuck. But, no, I I care about Diablo. Oh, no, no. It's like, no, this, like, Dr. Light is just a, like, Dr. Light and KG Beast are just dead. Like, this is just shown, like, anybody can die. Like, not just, like, oh, a good, a bad guy going good for redemption. He dies. No dead don't give a fuck right okay and uh, who, who was the who was the merlin other? merlin malcolm merlin i quite like malcolm merlin i think that's a good one and i think technically he should be in competition with dead shot for lead well that could be a thing it could be a three-way battle for lead and harley's just sitting there pure just pulling the strings pulling the strings because she can right exactly. okay I'll g- the, the, right your budget's gone well right okay so tell me a quick summary of your story Okay, summary. 
Luther pays off maybe blackmails people above Waller because you know if he knows who Superman is and who Batman is then why not know about this task force X you know why not this guy created like another life form from Kryptonian DNA in this super shit computer so why not why not have him know this? Why not have him blackmail p- the right people to organise this task force to break him out of prison? Why not? Okay. Like, right. in the sole so purpose of, I'm going to get these two dicks back, like, in such a bad way, they're not even going to know it, and I'm going to use people. And this could be where, like, almost like a start of branching the villains out shown that there's connections between them I think it was Calculator in Identity Crisis who was the one that was given uh, funnily enough Captain Boomerang a job for money like oh I need you to do this take this guy out oh where's money come from don't know but yeah you're you're owed you're putting this much money out we kind of need it right okay so skip all the skip all the ins and outs right so they've, they've broke Luther out yeah right so what's happening Luther ends up screwing them fucking over. Is like, he rich? Yes. Because he's bald now and don't trust bald people. No. You you see their ref- you see the reflection of yourself on their scalp. And it That's almost makes right. it like you're the villain. <laughs> it almost makes you feel like you're the villain. Anyway, so Luther fucks them over. How does it end? Uh Luther in his time on the Kryptonian ship, between making Doomsday and stuff. He m- he'd made his big green and purple suit. You know, the big power suit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He'd made that and stashed it away. So, on the extraction, fucks him over, something happens, they wake up, they don't know what's happened, but all they know is, going to n- New 52 uh, comic Suicide Squad, they've got 24 hours to do this mission, otherwise a bomb goes off. There's no, like, uh, mid-mission stop. They've got to complete the mission. Like you have this time, complete it or you die. So who? So if they if it's them versus Luther, who are they fighting in between? Because Luther obviously has just. It would be it. prison guards, but it would be maybe. What's the kind of like, the big, uh, DC powers like kind of like your shield? Is it Argus and? I want to say Cadmus. Does it does that ring a bell? Mm-hmm. Maybe have them. Uh, one that was actually quite well known, Gladiator. I want to say he f- was kind of like yellow. Okay. Like okay. have him as like the head of security of the prison. Like this is a supermax, super villain prison, not a Task Force X. That's the kind of black spot. That's where all but the other of them live there. Mm-hmm. All right. I know why they're there. They're doing these all these little black op missions. So have a couple well known heroes in charge. There's your superhero fight. You're good against bad. And then instead of rooting for the good guy, you're kind of going, you know what, I want to see him get smashed the fuck with a baseball bat. Why right, not? okay, okay, I'll give you this budget, but if it's as shit as David Ayer's movie, <laughs> we are going to have a problem. <laughs> see, the thing is, is David Ayer's movie is at least fun to watch at times because you can laugh and you can cry and you can ask yourself what you paid £11 to watch at home. But, you, you know... It, probably shows promise but i know what mines would do by the way kill them all (laughs) just kill them all like that's that's my (laughs) film kill everyone apart from harley because i quite like her even joker i need even willing to kill joker (laughs) fresh start clean slate that's 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 my that's my movie it would just be this big 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 huge build up to despair and that is what my suicide squad movie would be Aye, nice. I, th- I think we're alright with that. Big build up to despair death. <laughs> <laughs> Just wipe them out. Cool, Batman saves the day. Anyway, a couple of wee tidbits that I want to talk about, right? Yeah. Diablo's wee fire princess and then puts the glass at it. Did yeah. that not remind you of somebody? One Victor Freeze with Nora. Yeah, very true. I was like, oh mate, come on, be a bit mm-hmm. original about it. Like, well, look at this way. They're clutching at any comic book reference to kind of go like, oh, look at this. Look at this. What was it you wanted to talk about? You wanted to talk about something. What? How shit it was? <laughs> how, holy sh- how 
shit the whole experience was. Yeah. It, no, there was this particular was scene you wanted to talk about. Oh, wait, there was this one that I even referenced. Yeah, cool. I'm down with this shit. Uh, yeah. S- theatrical and extended cut. How the fuck did this get left in? I don't know. The, the fucking editor needs to be fired. Like, he... They had the chance to correct themselves for the extended cut. Or the next Like, they, they, they could have, like, cut out five seconds and added in another five seconds of David Ayer pleasuring himself on screen. I wouldn't... I would have probably been better with that. I would have been like, cool, you corrected the mistake. Well done. But, yeah, Harley uh, already has a bomb disarmed that the helicopter is... I've ranted many times to people. Then, in the bar... Brick flag smashes the little detonator. Then she turns around and looks at her freaking neck in a mirror. It's a small thing. I don't see why you get so annoyed about it. It's like Blink-182 Blink said. All the small things. They build up and snowball into a clusterfuck of a movie. <laughs> that was the cherry on the cake for me. To sum this up, right? To sum this whole film up, right? Party syndrome, right? That's it. Uh... And if you've just skipped to the end and you don't know what party syndrome is, good luck <laughs> trying to find it. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like the, the overall the film is fun. I enjoy watching it. I could watch it many times because it doesn't take a lot of brain power to watch. And I like films like that sometimes. Every now and again, you just need something to break up the monotony of films that are trying to be different and quirky and oh, like really up their own ass. This film is not up its own ass, and David Ayer knows it. So much so that, you know, just some of the most benign and odd and strange stuff happens in it. But do you know something? Does it deserve a sequel? Probably not. I want one. I want to see if it can get better. I want to see if he can take extra care and write a script, take longer with it, actually read the source material. Because this was the thing for me. He tried to make it his own, you know, to, to mention a few things from the comic book that were changed, and I am no way being like racist, abusive, or whatever. Deadshot is white in the comic. He changed that, and I think it worked. Will Smith is amazing as Deadshot, I think. He's he's probably the star of the show, because he's Will Smith, right? And then you've got like sort of Harley Quinn, who normally wears more clown and jester-like outfits, but with this he tried to make her just dress like a... A normal person with a bit of a slutty side. I, I was going to say, like a slut. Uh, she's she's made. Let's to just look call a spade a spade. Like, yeah, they made a spade. Like, it's just she deserves to be a bit better than that because it's not all about the sex appeal with Harley. She's it's subtle. She, she the the thing with the the, the, the kind of play suit, our original sort of animated costume, was to almost come across like she was Joker's plaything, like. She knew it, and she wanted that. Whereas in this, she's got this new look, and it need it needed to be. You couldn't see her run about in that through the whole thing, but it was nice to. It, it was nice to just see it for that brief moment. Uh, what else changed? Um, to Enchantress, everything changed. Oh, hips don't lie. Um, she she just looks like. She literally looks like Mario shit her out. Like, <laughs> that is what she looks like. Like I don't. She doesn't. Like, she doesn't even remotely resemble Enchantress at all. Like all the characters do vaguely stand for their characters. Like Deadshot, Will Smith, Deadshot resembles Deadshot. He has the mask and all that. And yeah, which you put. I wanted to say. He puts on for five minutes. Because it's Will Smith and Will Smith well, will not have his face it's, covered. It's actually not even five minutes. He puts it on uh, for a tactical purpose, I'd imagine, which we don't understand. Is it Kevlar? Uh, is it just for spooks? Does, does the, It's like the kill of Batman. Does it incite fear into people? Like uh, it must. Maybe the, the legend of him. But that's the thing. See the, see the lens he uses? He doesn't need it. Yeah. He showed that. Like yeah, in the f- in the prison scene when he's shooting, bang on target. But they're straight targets. Maybe that lens kind of helps him zoom quickly. Identify the optical zoom and shit. Like where he could shoot from. Like I say, 
I could we could go into problems with this film all day, but like I said, it's the changes for the comic book that kind of rattle me a wee bit. Like I said, Will Smith is probably the best change. I think easily. <coughs> I think Will Smith killed it in this. I think he done a really good job. Killer Croc underused, Katana underused, Harley Quinn overused, but it worked because it's it's a character. It's 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 the thing they've went. Okay, these are our. See, to be honest, these are our two main characters: Deadshot, Harley. Every everything else Li- revolves around. Literally, them. right now, you name every character to me, right, and I will give you one word to sum them up. Boomerang. Prick. Waller. Prick. Flag. Bit des- bit desperate. <laughs> Junman. Desperate. Enchantress. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Katana. Amazing. Croc. Pretty slav. Joke. Hmm? Joker. Useless. Irrelevant. Unrequired. Exactly. Like, and that's me saying that, and I love him. <laughs> like, but, but like I say, here's things to improve on, David. Take time to write the script. Have someone read the script when you've made it. Someone who's not a close friend. Um, give the cat, give the cast some bloody breathing room. Let them do their thing, because then this is just feels very much like everybody's got to stick up. Everybody's kind of got that, and Margot Robbie's the only one that doesn't. It's like it's like it left all the cool lines for her. Right, which isn't fair. Like they all need to have their own level of space and stuff like that and I think that's something that seriously needs to be emphasised. What, what, what kind of disturbs me? The scene here right at the end uh, that we've had on the background where it's his kid that's going so if you're up in this building you're shooting down at a guy That like, is rather disturbing that, but like, <laughs> like she's bringing it back like oh hey dad But I think, that's, I think that's the kind of make him feel more comfortable because he does. He doesn't like her knowing that he does it, but she quite clearly knows. Yeah, and she doesn't want him to feel that she won't love him for doing what he does, which is kind of traumatizing to some degree. It just shows you how much of a shit more she has that <laughs> she would rather go with him. Like, but again, you know, the the father daughter relationship that they two have was 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 lovely. It's the most third dimension thing. Um. All the characters, all the main cast in it work. Viola Davis was, sh- she needs more of an emotional side. Because Amanda Waller does have an emotional side. We just don't see it very often. Um, and yeah, like I say, all the characters just need a wee bit of emphasis and a wee bit more time. Killer Croc is fantastic comic relief. They should take the work on him more. Boomerang is Jai Courtney plays Boomerang very well. Like that's exactly what you would expect him to be like. So, like I said, the main cast play the characters well. It's just the story lets it down. David Ayer let it down. David Ayer is the issue. Like he's supposed to be the one that goes, "Okay, this is my movie. We're doing it my way." Aye. But um, really, someone should have the reins on him. Next time, story condensed. Straight to the point, nothing too stupid. Give it a wee bit of party syndrome if you like, but as long as the audience are getting this story, and yeah, like I say, like like I say, overall the film is fun. I I enjoy watching it. I just think that the film can be quite shit at points, and sometimes there's more shit than there is good. So you know, it just depends when I watch it and how I feel and stuff like that. But overall, film is fun. It's a terrible te- film, technically. I don't know what they were thinking. But it's not on par with Tommy Wiseau's The Room. So we'll leave it at that. We're all right. I just can't understand like that end scene. Like, Why does she look so like perplexed? Like, Oh my god! It says Joker right in his chest. I know. It's like, can you not read? <laughs> we are talking about the, the final scene in the, the movie when the Joker um, apparently breaks into the prison to save Harley. 
Um, he has Joker written in big capital letters on his chest. Right and he across takes the his mask chest. off. And he's like, she's like, Bobbin! Like, I love you so much. You know, you want to leave me? Can I take the espresso machine? Like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's madness, but it's genius. And I just need the film, I need the next film to be better. Because the thing is, is DC are fucking up. Batman vs Superman. Batman vs Superman looked amazing. S- sounded Story good. Sounded good. Story was shit. Batman kicked Superman's ass. But let's be in, let's be real. When he happened, would not yeah. happen. Like, no matter how much kryptonite, when he happened, like Batman is totally made out to be this overpowered guy just because he's he's a human. He's Batman. But the fact is, see, is, see if it was uh, like Green Arrow against uh, Superman. Totally wouldn't be that way. Just be like, oh, Green Arrow got bitch slapped. Exactly. But because it's Batman, he has to oh, put up a fight. He has to be. He has to be better, and that really annoys me. Um. So yeah, what DC kind of need to focus on? Because like the Suicide Squad looked nothing like Batman vs Superman cinematography wise, because all the Marvel films share a similar cin- cinematography style. It's how you can connect that they're all Marvel films. Yeah. Suicide Squad and Batman vs. Superman are drastically different cinematically. Batman vs. Superman is a gorgeous film to watch. See, if you watch it with the sound off, it looks incredible. But see, then you watch it with the sound on and you hear what's going on. Fucking shocking. And then Wonder Woman looks completely different as well. Yeah. But I've got a lot of faith in Wonder Woman because... If they fuck up Wonder Woman, it's, the, the, the it's fucked gone. it. The fucked it, because Wonder Woman is the first leading female, like character. Like this is their chance to win the hearts of every female on the planet. They can't fuck it up, and if they do, is there a is there a comeback? There, there, there's not. If Wonder Woman fails horribly, don't even try DC. That's what I'm saying. And it's a shame because they've already filmed Justice League. I know. So we're at least guaranteed Justice League. Well, a part one, maybe. Uh, it's one of those ones. Another story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the ones. Um, but yes, um, like Bruce Wayne, we're gonna n- we're gonna split because we've got friends to find and lives to live, and. <laughs> Yes, Mario has a lot of editing to do. <laughs> yeah, I need to cut out like uh, some, Everything. some some bad jokes there. Yeah, I will see you next time. And on that note, goodbye.